it isn't fair. It really isn't fair, is it? This is one of these parables that does what parables are meant to do, leave us with more questions than answers. It's like the parable of the treasure in the field or the pearl of great price, where somebody just turns out to be lucky because he finds it. Or the one lost sheep that gets more attention than the 99 who are good. Last Sunday, we had the unmerciful servant, if you remember. And there we had someone, a debtor, who was about to be sold into debt slavery along with his family. Here, we have a rich landowner with a big vineyard. So there are economic aspects of both of these parables. It's harvest time. And here we have this rich landowner who needs labor to uh, bring in the harvest. He doesn't have enough um, of his own staff to do it. So he has to hire people. Temporary hired help. So it's not slave labor, it's hired labor unskilled hourly workers, immigrants perhaps. Some are still unemployed at late hours and that's a bad sign for the economy. It means there's more supply than there is demand. He agrees to pay them a denarius. And it's very interesting. The, I have um, here a, a, an older uh, lectionary that uses an earlier version of the New American Bible, the, the standard translation that is used in the, in the uh, USCCB lectionary. And it glosses over that instead of saying he agrees with it for a denarius, it says for the usual wage. I guess they figure that uh, Americans wouldn't know what a denarius was, so we'll do an interpretation. But this newer edition says, goes back to what it actually says. A denarius is a silver coin uh, equivalent, it, it's a Roman coin, which is interesting. Uh, it's the Roman coinage that's being used here. It's the equivalent of a drachma, which is the Greek coinage. But we're, we're in a Roman world here. And it's the common wage for a day laborer or a soldier serving for one day. So it's, when I, when I think of it as minimum wage, he goes out with that second group about 9 a.m. and he, he tells them he will pay what is dikaion, which is a right. A, a person who is dikaios is, we, we often translate righteous, uh, not self-righteous, but righteous. Um, someone who is just, someone who is fair, um, someone who is good. And he says that he will pay them that. Uh, what what is right or just? It's not top wage, but he he it, it's an agreement, and he will pay that. It's very interesting to look at um, another passage in the New Testament, Colossians, from the Pauline letters, Colossians chapter four, verse one. This is part of the famous household code where the it's um, husbands and wives and and um, parents and children and slaveholders and slaves. And this is the very end of it where it says, masters, slaveholders, treat your slaves, dikayon, that same word, kaizotita, which is equal. So treat them justly and equally. I don't think it means he should consider them equal to himself. That's unlikely, but that he doesn't play favorites. And there's a statement there that, that um, recurs a number of times in biblical literature that God, uh, God, shows, no, uh, God shows no partiality. Um, and, and that's the, the fundamental basis for e equality of members of the church, of equality in baptism. There's no Jew or Greek slave or free, but all are one in Christ Jesus because of that fundamental sense of equality, which is not there in the social world. But this raises the question, what is just and what is fair? And or are they the same thing? Is it fair when everyone gets the same? That's what happens here. And there's a sense of unfairness about it. Is it fair payout 
in proportion to what is put in, depending on the amount of effort that's put in, you expect the, the appropriate um, outcome. Well, anybody who um, dabbles in investments in the stock market knows that's not the case. Or putting in emotional investment with people. Sometimes it pays off and sometimes it doesn't. Is just being just getting what you deserve? How to judge that? Did this vineyard owner go back into the marketplace and hire these people later in the day because he still needed workers or because he knew that they too needed the daily wages, though, though no one had hired them? He seems wealthy. He seems generous. We don't know what the intention is supposed to be. But is it just and is it fair? Is justice when everybody gets the same or when everybody gets what they need to thrive, even if it isn't all the same? The vineyard owner says to the one man who objects, the translation is, are you envious because I am generous? What it really says is, is your eye evil because I am good? This is one of a few references in the New Testament to the belief in the evil eye, that some people had the ability to put a curse on you simply by looking at you the wrong way. At that point, does the vineyard owner begin to feel threatened? That this person is threatening him uh, so that he has to protect himself. We don't know that either. But it all raises this uh, terrible question, I think. Is fair the same as just? The vineyard owner wasn't fair to everybody, but was he just? He kept the agreed arrangement. He didn't cheat on them. He didn't deprive them. He did what he said he was going to do. And it was left to the workers to interpret how they understood that, how it was to be understood for each of them. Probably slapped on to the end of the parable is the saying, the first shall be last and the last shall be first. But of course, the, the entire parable is an illustration of that. When I was uh, giving talks to large groups, I love to use this because what happens in a, a lecture hall, the people who come first sit in the back so that the front seats are empty. And so the people who come late have to come and sit in the front. And I say, the first shall be last and the last shall be first. But it's more serious than that, isn't it? It isn't fair. <laughs> it isn't fair that the first shall be last and the last shall be first. But is it just according to God's own sense of justice? <laughs>